After sales stalled in the early 2000s, Guinness is now one of the fastest growing beers in the world, with revenue jumping 17% in 2023 and 30% the year before. In this video, I want to take you on a journey through time, even to the Guinness factory in Dublin, Ireland, so you can learn the secrets behind what has made it one of the world's most favorite beers. The Origins of Guinness Our tale begins in 1759 with Arthur Guinness, who learnt the art of brewing from his father who exclusively produced beer for a local archbishop. After starting a small regional brewery, business was good and Arthur decided to move to Dublin, signing a 9,000 year lease for the brewery you can still visit today. What was the price? A measly £45 per year. Now that's an amazing deal. By the 1770s, Guinness decided to stop focusing on ales and instead focused on a new type of English beer called Porter, a product which is closer to the Guinness you know and love today. By 1838, Guinness was the largest brewery in Ireland, and by 1886, it was the largest in the world. The 1920s represented a tough time for Guinness with the prohibition, but given its global footprint, it survived and was in a great place to re-enter the American market. The taste of Guinness. In the Guinness factory, I was able to taste both a direct sample from one of the via their beer tasting tour. The lady just said this is the freshest Guinness that I'll ever get, let's give it a taste. Essentially, the taste comes from three key concepts. The first is the secret strain of yeast used in the fermenting process, which is still kept under lock and key today. Some people say the strain dates all the way back to the 1700s. However, science has confirmed that this can at least be proven all the way back to 1903. This yeast is so special that it actually produces certain chemicals that give particular flavors. For instance, diacetyl, which gives the beer its buttery taste. The second is its dark rich ruby color which comes from the roasting process where barley is heated to exactly 232 degrees. The third is the use of nitrogen for storage which began in 1959 which gives the beer its unique, fresh and creamy taste, differentiating it from other beers which use CO2. In fact, the small ball in your Guinness beer can was invented to inject nitrogen for you at home, a device we call a widget. The marketing genius of Guinness. Guinness was known as the first beer company to revolutionize advertising. Their early ads featuring the toucan are still memorable, but it was actually their first ad in 1929 with the Guinness is good for you slogan that created the belief the beer could actually deliver health benefits. In fact, it's one of the lowest calorie beers on the market with only 210 in one pint and two grams of protein, the most in any mainstream beer. Guinness throughout the years has been known for their famous television campaigns. In fact, they were one of a handful of companies to purchase the first advertising spot when commercial television went live in 1955. Ever since, they produced a range of amazing ads. One of the more famous ones was the Surfers campaign in 1999, which has often been called the best TV ad of all time. It's actually light on its feet and smooth as velvet. In 1959, Guinness decided to mark its 200th anniversary, launching the Guinness Book of World Records, a marketing stroke of genius that became a global sensation and further strengthened the brand. Guinness has also been one of the first companies to embrace viral influencer marketing, using celebrities captured candidly drinking the product to strengthen the brand internationally. For instance, the Obamas, Clintons, Queen Elizabeth II, and a host of other celebrities have been spotted enjoying a Guinness, and I can't blame them. How to pour the perfect Guinness Inside the factory, I was lucky enough to take a pouring class and learned that there are four steps to doing the perfect pour of Guinness every time. Firstly, tilt the glass at a 45 degree angle and aim the beer at the harp on the glass. Secondly, once the beer is full enough to reach the top of the harp, stop your pouring. Next, let the beer settle for a minute or so and finish up by pouring the rest of the beer. I tell you what, it makes a world of difference in the flavor. And don't worry, it takes a few times to get it right. Now time to get hammered. Perfect Guinness pour. It's delicious, that's actually amazing. Super good. Guinness's total global sales. 
Understanding exactly how much Guinness is sold is a little bit tricky. You see, Guinness actually merged with New Metropolitan to become Diageo back in 1997 for $15.8 billion. Today, the company controls over 200 of the world's largest brands, including Johnny Walker, Smirnoff, and Bailey's. Sales figures for Guinness are hidden amongst all of these leaders. However, after analyzing their annual report, we can estimate sales being anywhere from 0.7 billion to $1 billion per year. Guinness continues to go from strength to strength with close to 20% sales growth each year for the last two years, fueled by two things. Firstly, the launch of Guinness Zero, and secondly, the growth of the Guinness Micro Draft, allowing small pubs, restaurants, and even people at home to enjoy tap quality beer. The only way to truly appreciate the Guinness experience is to visit the factory in Dublin Island. Some of my favorite moments include the amazing food, the opportunity to meet other Guinness lovers from around the world in the rooftop beer lounge with views over the entire city of Dublin, and the ability to see exactly how the beer is made with your very own eyes. Overall, it was an amazing experience with a bit of a free tasting. It was great value for money and would definitely recommend it. Overall, all the success story of Guinness highlights the remarkable journey of a brand that has continually evolved and adapted over the centuries. From its humble beginnings in a small Dublin brewery to becoming a global powerhouse, what truly sets Guinness apart isn't just its rich history or its distinctive taste, it's the brand's uncanny ability over these years to build a sense of community amongst its drinkers. So whether it's raising a toast with friends in a cozy pub or enjoying a quiet pint at home, there's something about Guinness that feels like more than just a beer. So remember, the next time you're pouring a pint, don't rush it. If you like the video, please don't forget to like and subscribe and looking forward to seeing you all on the next adventure.